that uh, Daniel uh, from Stein uh, wants to play this. And I don't think that it should be constantly switched between people. Uh, uh, we will make sure that there's uh, something that you can clean this. Because, you know, you have to really blow, actually, it's not only blowing, as you know. Yeah. There will be a lot of uh, saliva coming in this as well. And, uh, the... Uh, this sensor has not, is not, it's not like a real tuba where you have to blow to make sound. Because you can actually also use just this. You can actually play seven different pitches with this. According to a bitmap. And um, when you do blow, you can actually modulate uh, the sound. So this is really the bass player, and of course, what is nice is that uh, the bass player can uh, can adopt uh, its his playing rhythm to the other two instruments. Now, one of the most important parts: how do you wear all this stuff? Um, <coughs> For that, I'm going to switch it off again. I think that um, we need to make uh, a little kind of a schedule. Uh, you won't be able to hold it. Everything is made in such a way that it should be strapped to your belt. So, let me actually just demonstrate it. It's probably better that you take a look. <laughs> the good news is that uh, today I heard that there is power at the, uh, the... how do you call it? This place where we... The, at Nink, at there. Uh, oh shit. What's the name? The tent, basically, that they have. So that means that every time between the sessions we can recharge the batteries. I think that's very good. Giving <laughs> 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 you know, black leather belts. <laughs> it's not like if it's, if it's an accident, you know it's a Mac Mini. <laughs> What is important is you have to know the order of uh, of strapping. That's the most difficult part. Dress rehearsal. Yeah. <clears throat> Alright. So and this is already quite heavy. That's why the belt should be pretty tight, because otherwise everything will hang here after 10 minutes. There we go. So 
So this is basically how you hold it. And as you can see, since the connector is this way, uh, you cannot really uh, put the computer on the other side. But what you can do is put this one over here, so that you, if you prefer, playing with your other hand. I mean, that's not so much a problem. Quite a lot of weight on your lower back. We don't have to do like choreographed dance moves or anything, right? Well, uh, that's <laughs> something we'll discuss a little bit later. Yeah, yeah. Then the other problematic part is undressing. Because this cable, this connector is really a strong Sorry, I hope to. connector. Yeah, I think it's important that you should be able to do it yourself. And uh, of course, if people are around to help, it's no problem. But it might be that in a situation it's very busy and you really need to unbutton. Yeah, this belt's too fat to fit through. Oh yeah? Oh. Use one of the skinny yeah, ones. <laughs> that's the, that might be a problem. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. The marching band? The, the marching band leader. <laughs> well, I have a small one. But yeah, yeah. It's so oh, that was the original idea, to have this okay. stick, it has a special name, and then it really? they just wanted to play their acoustic instruments. Yeah, of course. Mm -hmm. Well, of course. Um, Getting closer. Blaster. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> And of course, it should look like uh, tomorrow. It should look like if you have been doing this for years. <laughs> no problem. Yeah. Uh, dress up. Like you need an extra room. hole on this one for yeah? me. Oh yeah. Yeah. Because it's gonna. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe I'll move it over to the side. Yeah. Like that. <laughs> I don't want to move it. <laughs> Maybe I'll go ahead and... Yeah, you, what you can do is probably now just turn it around. I think that's... Yeah. Cool. Now, for now, they the easy solution. Okay. <laughs> Instead of looking like a hand. Yeah. 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 Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Much better, right? Maybe. Yeah, you know. It's a bit It's fine. <laughs> I do. I don't have one. Okay, um, I'm going to get you one. To wear. On the internal. Okay. okay. What sizes do you have, like larger? We have large, extra large. Extra large, yeah. Extra large, yeah, we have extra large. It's just too big. It's really yeah. big. Yeah. If it clicks yeah. down, I'll, it's I'll get a few yeah. Just because they might, yeah, they yeah, might yeah. shrink, huh? Not really, not really. Not really. Yeah. Just to tell you a little bit. Oh, this is a nice. It's heavy as it looks. This isn't too bad. No. Okay. So how does it go? Yeah, you just push. The thing? I think it is. Yeah. <laughs> oh. No, a little bit more. Now it's like that. On. Yeah. Are my pants falling down? <laughs> I don't know. This actually isn't too bad. It's not as heavy. Are we going to be marching oh, around? Yeah, jumping. Yeah. <laughs> oh, okay. Trampoline. Yeah, yeah. 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 Going to be hung from a wire. <laughs> <laughs> on each other's back. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Lights on. Maybe one more second. Maybe the person want to do it today. Yeah. Does it usually take like two minutes or three minutes before it actually? It's about one minute. Oh, okay. One, you switch it on. Hear the hum from the speakers. So the volume now, Paul, let's hear that's over here. Okay. 
guess you are also carrying this part. That's not too heavy, no? What is this? This is the wireless microphone receiver. Okay. Right. This one should be on, on the back. On your left. Okay. Uh, this one should be on your back. Nice. And now the time to do it. Yeah, what? It's, it's this thing. No, it's a little bit lower. Otherwise, we can grab this. Now you can grab it. Okay. So this part. Yeah. You've got to do some training before something. Yeah. <laughs> gosh. <laughs> no, that's it, right? You just put on the clip and then. Yeah, that's it. Actually, maybe in a backpack. And then it goes around the neck or something. Hmm? The snare drum, it goes around the neck or. Hmm? Hmm? Oh, for that. This guy, well, well, this one is a bit hard to reach. This it's completely over here. Alrighty. Can I switch it on? No. Because you're <laughs> using a <laughs> fundamental part. Oh, yeah, right, right. This part. <laughs> and for that, you hold it with both your hands. Against your neck. <laughs> oh, cool. Yeah. Uh, we have an extra belt. Oh. <laughs> This side. Well, it should be on your knee. Oof. So I guess. Don't <laughs> <laughs> walk around with these things. And then you can hook it up to there. That one might be the hardest. Oi. No, no. This one actually carries quite well. Pretty well, yeah. yeah. All right. How are you feeling with? <laughs> yeah, we got. It. Yeah. Ready to rock, man. <laughs> Feels pretty good. Can you move? Well, it's kind of a new sensation, you know, kind of. <laughs> <laughs> no, what are you talking about? Kind of like. Like what? Maybe I'm gonna get a hernia. No. <laughs> <laughs> it's all good for you. No, it doesn't make any. We have to wait till you hear the, the start of sound. And it's also better to not play the instrument before you. No, it's yeah. It's uh, so sometimes the startup sound doesn't. Yeah. Take of course one of the. Yeah. 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 First of all, it's very top heavy. Okay. And you need to wear it like this. <coughs> Significantly. How heavy is it? Slam your back, right? Yeah. This way. Oh, yeah, I can feel it down here too. Yeah, yeah. It's just all the stuff okay. hanging off your waist, man. So, on your shoulder, like this, this will be shrink wrapped around it, so yeah. that's why it's still yeah. here. And then you put this to your mouth, and it's best to hold this. Okay. Yeah, because it's bendable. Mm -hmm. And then with the other arm, you play it like this. Okay. You make it look so easy. It's just like, oh yeah, just put it over. That's Daniel funny. actually <laughs> preferred it uh, like this. <laughs> oh, I don't think that's such a good idea. It's not too no. safe, yeah. It slips. And <laughs> he liked it very much like yeah. that, so maybe we'll get him a special helmet. But uh, no, this, uh, this is okay. Okay. Thank <laughs> you.
Is it necessary to really put it inside the... Absolutely, in the hole. Because otherwise we'll lose it. I guess you gotta do like traditional marching band style for it. You know, like. This works actually. It works. Ready? <laughs> Thank you. 
come both days but uh, we only need three per day okay oh. and um, let me let me check one, one second yeah. it doesn't matter for me it doesn't matter yeah. what was your name again Michael Mike yeah, yeah. I can do both if you want or just one. yeah okay I will send an email uh, oh, yeah. later on to yeah. sort of my schedule okay. thanks for coordinating everything you said do you have a preference oh, let me just check in my, in my agenda right okay.
Understand? Oh yeah, this is that sound. Yeah. That's that sound. So you get a better idea of what the individual instruments are. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. It's taking a little bit, <laughs> but it's good. Well, it's only <laughs> ten minutes now. <laughs> well, it's See, minutes. It might be nice yeah. to have a conductor, because like the musical aspect is a little. Well, I'm sure, can I try to conduct you guys one time? Yeah. So we'll do it with like the magic. The magic ball, okay? When the magic ball is is in front of you, then you play, okay? Uh, 
But uh, maybe if, if I won't give an introduction, but you We've had the four-day workshop. These are the participants, and uh, I'm going to show you a little bit. This was just basically filler. This is a project of my own that was a 3D video project that I thought I'd just throw up whilst, whilst people were arriving. So um, I'll talk about that a little bit later when I talk about my own work. What I'm going to do is um, explain a tiny little bit about Isadora. Then the students here will just present just a couple of minutes each of what they've been working on to show you um, how far you can actually get in four days with, without knowing too much to begin with. Um, my way of working with this door in, in workshops is to focus 50% on um, technology and the other 50% on what are you going to do with it. So um, the, the, the real goal was for them to end up after, at the end of four days with at least the beginning of some kind of installation piece or something that had a strong enough idea that they would be able to go on and develop it further themselves. Um, rather than just learning a bunch of software um, tools uh, and, and not having um, uh, um, a real solid um, uh, performative result to take away with them. So um, uh, that's a little bit what the guts of Isadora looks like. Uh, for those of you that are involved with software and music and so on, you probably have heard of Max MSP, which is um, graphical programming. Uh, objects, uh, which Isadora calls actors, that um, have various different jobs and tasks. And in this little job, there is a, uh, um, a custom actor down the left-hand side that's sampling sound inside the guts of it. There's a whole bunch more going on. 
and uh, again it's just um, I can sample any of these um, energies from the different pictures um, or volume or uh, I can watch the room with cameras and, and um, take data from that for movement triggers um, you can see I've got some video playing down there at the bottom uh, there's various different things that I can do with the video scratching here with I've got my Wii controller set up so just as you may have seen some of the other um, uh, Stein residents use Wii controller with Junction and Lisa software to uh, perform and scratch music uh, of course it's graphical programming software running on mathematics data and numbers you can do exactly the same thing with Isadora with video that you can do with um, uh, uh, Junction and, uh, and Lisa or Max MSP. Um, one other thing you may have noticed when I fiddled around a little bit there was I'm actually controlling the lights in the room as well. Um, not in a very sophisticated way, but that was part of the workshop to get them to the level where they actually would be able to, if they had $1,000 to go and buy one of these boxes, uh, they could actually start to hook up to theater lighting systems and um, uh, create interactive lighting as well that could be driven either by movement or sound or any mathematics at all. Um, so in this example, I'm just using the uh, different actions to control different lights. So some of the lights are mapped to gestures. And um, uh, well, Tom and I were playing around just very briefly earlier for fun with some of his um, music um, also running some of these lights. So um, again, just a sort of little mini demonstration of you know that this, this, this works very well. A lot of people are using touch controllers such as the iPad, iPad and the iPod these days. Um, the Wii was a lot more popular a couple of years ago. Along came uh, new programs using Touch OSC. And uh, um, they work very, very well as long as you have a robust network or if you can set up your own ad hoc wireless network in the room because uh, they, they're only communicating by Wi-Fi. Um, unfortunately, I don't know if the rain, we, we've had quite a few problems with with, uh, with the network um, during the workshop. So, um, uh, we sort of it, uh, because of our time constraints, they learned how to use them. They made them work, and then eventually we actually decided to put down and concentrate on the Wii, just so that they could keep moving forward. Because the Wii controller is connecting via Bluetooth, so uh, we didn't have any problems with those connections. Um, so I'm just going to give over control of the uh, projector to the first group here. They're just going to give you a short little demo of each of their pieces, and then, uh, then we'll go back to talk. I'll show you some more about my own work um, and explain how it's going along. So,
explain what they were working with. They, they um, had it working a lot better earlier. <laughs> um, so it's a little bit like the narcissist pool. You walk up to the pool, you see your image down there in, in the water, but you have control over some other parameters with the Wii controller, so notably the audio, um, and also some video processing filters and effects as well. So their, their, their idea for this was to um, uh, uh, keep massaging it into um, a, an installation piece that the general public could um, play with. And uh, if they perform the right triggers. <laughs> Then the installation starts asking questions about themselves as well, um, related to you know narcissism and looking at your reflection. So they start to uh, um, get provoked in that way as well.
They, they all um, went through the uh, new media um, interactive software birthing process in the last four days with all of its trials and tribulations and um, annoyances and all the rest of it. Um, but uh, they all came up with interesting concepts to wrap their heads around that they can develop into really solid pieces, I think. So um, I was asked to talk to you also a little bit about my own work. So um, I'm going to hide Isadora for a moment and uh, just boot up something else. This is junction. Turn here. So um, I've been working in interactive design and live performance for about the last 10 years. Before that, I was a photographer and a filmmaker, so a strong background in visual arts. Um, I do perform as well as design, both for myself and other people, although lately my focus has turned to um, uh, installation performance rather than straight up theatre performance. So that's, that's me in the, in the centre there. Um, performing in a piece called Grace, which was a dance duet with a uh, remote wireless camera that I, that I built um, that also emitted infrared uh, light as well as being a micro camera. Um, another dance piece and, and, and yet again another dance piece. But, um, um, so I create visual music performances with orchestra, opera. Um, I do designs for theatre. Um, and uh, uh, I do still uh, gallery exhibits and installations that are photo based but I add sound and interactive elements to otherwise traditional photographic exhibits um, I uh, uh, a performing member of NBC which is a new music collective in Vancouver um, and uh, I teach these workshops and I'm also a professor at the University of British Columbia working on two different research projects uh, one of which involves pushing Isadora um, further than it really wants to be pushed and in that process we've been giving lots of feedback to Mark Canelio, the inventor or designer of creator of Isadora software um, and um, he's just actually uh, two weeks ago released a new version, the 1.3 beta, which took some of our recommendations into consideration and um, have uh, opened up a lot of new possibilities for um, improved options for how to handle um, not just eight lights in a room, but um, you know, 512 lights in, in, a, in, a, in a large theatre or multiple universes of lights. And so it's quite an exciting time for Isadora software. Um, the user base is growing uh, um, quite quickly and the things that Isadora is able to do uh, keep changing almost monthly with new, new um, functions being added. Um, the big brother, of course, to Isadora is Max MSP, which most musicians are well aware of. Um, and, and Max MSP is a wonderful software too, but it, it's a, a much um, uh, longer learning curve. Isadora is a quicker entry, but you're still able to go into mathematical programming and algorithms and many of the other functions that, that Max and Jitter um, let you do, you can still do in Isadora. So, so that's why the demand, the main reason why the demand for Isadora is really hot right now is because it's easier to learn in the beginning. And um, uh, it's optimized for video and uh, now also optimized quite nicely for interactive lighting too. And you can run music as well. Um, I often will um, gang, I'm just going to jump through some of these uh, images to uh, going ahead a little bit. Um, uh, what does it say? It's optimized. Uh, for, uh, what I tend to do when I'm on collaborative performances is just network the softwares together so I can actually um, use multiple softwares in a single performance. So I might have a Max patch running and an Isadora patch running and a uh, um, Ableton Live or Canaxis or any others or Lisa or Junction, Oscillator, all these other softwares can all talk to each other very easily these days. Um, I'll show you a couple of little video clips about my work and then move on to my current work, which is what I'm the most excited about and most interested in. Um, 
these are images from a dance duet that was run entirely uh, with two computers running as a door. We created a large stage set environment that was um, three-dimensional in nature with scrims and screens. And um, here's a little clip from it. Oh, sound. Sorry. Let me just plug sound in. Who's got the audio cable now? out of here for a second. I realize the lights are so bright that it's a little hard to see the screen. Let's run down there. That's the front there. There we go. Um, so this is another program. I regularly collaborate with a composer and uh, extended vocalist. They're a husband and wife team, Vivian Hul and Stefan Smolovitz, and a dancer called Noam Gagnon. And we do live improv performances together, so I'll just show you an excerpt from that performance. So um, I think I'll let it just speak for itself. It's about, it's another five minutes, but I won't play all of it, but you'll get a, a sense of some of the breadth of it. So um, there's interactive control of just about everything going on in this piece. You have the dancer with motion, you have two musicians, you have a visual artist, um, and uh, uh, some of it is cinematic, some of it is abstract visual music. Um, we're all listening um, and responding, call and response in every single direction and taking clues and triggers off each other for, for what to do next.
going to jump ahead a little bit to another section. 